Hey everybody, it's Megan Densmore. I'm totally late today. I am an actress, producer, and wellness guide. Um, and I am making it work, jumping on, fitting this in amidst the rest of my day. Um, I have a couple things I want to talk about today. They're kind of related, actually. Um, so uh, give me a, a like or a love or a, any f emoji you feel like if you've ever had an excuse. Have you had an excuse? Do you ever make excuses when you don't want to do stuff? Good morning, Norman. Do you ever use those excuses, um, feel kind of weird about it? Do you like having excuses? What do you gain by having excuses? What do you lose by having excuses? These are some things I'm going to talk about today. Um, as well, I'm gonna share some stuff that is just for my ladies and my guys can listen. You probably all have ladies in your life or Ladies, you know, I mean, y'all have a mom. You wouldn't be here without one. So uh, you all got ladies around you. So maybe listen in. Um, okay, excuses. My excuse for today is related to my topic at hand. Um, I, if you don't already know, I have fibromyalgia. Um, I'm pretty much in remission. One of the things that I deal with regularly is a condition called PCOS which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a very fancy way of saying um, my uterus is a little bit dramatic. This means that I have a history of having cysts on my ovaries that are not cancerous, but are very, very painful. Okay, I've had surgery for these. I have uh, been in and out of the hospital for these. I was put on birth control. I had all the side effects from the birth control. I got off the birth control. I got more cysts. I went back on the birth control, more side effects. You get the idea. So for about five years, um, I have not been on birth control and I have had no cysts. I'm knocking on some wood right here, okay? Um, now I have a point as to why I'm sharing this. I still, I so okay, victory is, Thanks to supplementation and dietary changes, I have no cysts and I don't have to be on birth control, which means no side effects, no cysts. Okay, this is awesome. This is really awesome. <laughs> um, and I have helped other ladies accomplish the same thing. So if you are a lady out there dealing with dysmenorrhea, painful periods, um, cramps, challenges like that, bad PMS, cysts on your ovaries, PCOS, if you've gotten that diagnosis and you don't know where to go, I'm your girl send me a message, we can talk about it. Okay, now I'm talking about this today in relationship to my other topic for a very specific reason. Um, I did not wanna do this live today. I did not wanna do anything today. I woke up at seven in the morning with such painful cramps, I could not breathe, I could not move, and I felt like puking. This is day one of my cycle, this is normal. I have been through a lot to be where I am and for me to have a regular cycle where literally the only thing that is bad on my cycle is about six to eight hours on day one. That is the only day where it's problematic. For whatever reason, my body just really likes to get it all done on one day. My cycle is short, it lasts about four days, it's all very healthy, it's just painful because I guess like the rest of my personality, my body doesn't really like to wait around, it just likes to get shit done. So it's just getting it done real fast. So on day one of my cycle, I can't do a whole lot, it's hard for me to function for about a day. Now, what's lovely today is this didn't occur in the middle of the night, so I was able to sleep last night and it'll be done by this evening, so I'll be able to sleep tonight as well. So I thought about this and I was like, I really don't want to go live today because if I go live today and I don't mention this, I'm going to be being inauthentic about what my reality is today. And then I went into like, oh, I can't talk about this because taboo subject, because ladies and their lady parts and whether or not we're able to actually talk about them because Ooh, I got to take care of all the guys and whether or not they think that's gross. So I'm actually not sorry because this is a reality of what it is to be a lady. It happens once a month. And you know what? 
because of this happening, we can have things like babies. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, cool. Yes, Norman, I know you're in. I can only imagine uh, after your, I was thinking about you this morning after doing all of the work on your house, you must be having a pretty, pretty bad flare up of your fibromyalgia today, so I hear you. Um, so yeah, first of all, I'm talking about this because me not wanting to do anything today because of this pain and like basically like my body is telling me take it easy today so if I had canceled this Facebook live for this excuse of my body telling me to take it easy would I have been wrong now I bring this up because I actually was in a situation a few months ago where I was somewhere where I was basically, I had a commitment to be working on a day um, where this actually happened. And I had my cycle start um, and I was, again, I really like to be reliable and I don't like excuses by nature. Instead of excuses, I like to take action as much as possible. I try not to complain or make excuses. I always want to figure out what the action is that I can take. Um, and if, like, if I'm making an excuse, generally that means I'm actually avoiding taking the action. So that's something I don't really like to, to do on a whole. Um, this has been problematic for me because again, I technically have a chronic illness and I have times when my body just tells me that's not gonna happen today. Um, and I remember I was in this situation where I then had to go to someone and I had to say, I, like, I can't work right now. And then what are they gonna say? Well, what's wrong with you? Um, acceptable excuses may have been, I have food poisoning and I just vomited in the restroom. Or, uh, I have a cold and I am contagious, so therefore I should go home. But here I was with, I just started my period. I have turned white because my body is getting rid of a whole bunch of blood right now. I need to sit down and what I've committed to you to do today requires me to stand up. And I'm not gonna be able to stand up very long without passing out and I'm not gonna be interested in talking to people, another part of my commitment for the day. So I'm really no good to you. I need to go home, but I told you I would be here. I'm, I'm reading what Kevin has to say. He says, my partner also has very painful periods. She's been going through a lot of tests and had really struggled through it. Women are brilliant and co can go through all sorts of hormonal difficulties. Thanks, Kevin, it's true. Um, this is really common, and that's another reason why I decided to talk about this today, because who knows how many people could be dealing with this who, who wanna see that, okay, so what the, the conclusion I, I came to that day was, I went home, because valid excuse because my body said, Megan, sit down, take it easy, rest. And I knew the cool thing about this is like, it's gonna pass, because it's only gonna last a few hours, then I'm gonna bounce back and I'm gonna be myself. So, so this is what I wanna say as is, is it really an excuse if we're in a situation where literally our body is saying, stop, rest, take a moment do some self-care, do what you need to do. And if we listen, and if we communicate it in a different way, it's not actually that I'm making excuses and avoiding my responsibilities. This is now literally me taking care of myself so that then I'm gonna be able to basically put my oxygen mask on and I'm gonna be better able to help everyone else. And if I had stayed in that situation where I was asked to be on my feet, social, reliable, if I had stayed in that situation, what is the negative net impact for those other people that I'm gonna be around? I'm actually then not helping, like I can't actually be a team member in that moment. In fact, it is better for the team if I remove myself from that situation and return again when I am back to what I can do. So, what I'm gonna offer to you is, um, Agreed, Norman. Norman said it can be an excuse if overused. If truly needed, self-care is 100% not an excuse. I agree, I agree. And this is sort of like a shaky 
a shaky line. So I'm gonna ask all of you to think about situations where maybe you made an excuse and you were just making an excuse because you wanted to get out of something. Think about that. Think about what that feel, felt like and think about what the impact was on other people. If you feel like it, comment below, let me know what that situation was. Um, and then also think about a time where instead of making ex an excuse, you really had something valid going on and you chose to not do something and you chose to take care of yourself. How did that feel? And what was the impact of that? Again, feel free to comment below. Um, so I wanna empower you to learn the difference and be responsible about the difference. That's my request to you today. So again, um, sh I'm, so I'm sharing today because I wanna be transparent about the fact that women deal with this every month and I don't want it to be taboo to talk about, so that's one of the things I'm trying to accomplish right now. Um, I also wanna share dealing with something like PCOS, painful periods, irregular periods, no periods at all, side effects of birth control, any of those things, and you want help, comment below, send me a message, let's chat, I wanna help you, I have solutions to help you, cool. Um, and I also wanna share, get, get clearer on your valid excuses. What are they? What are the things that you need in order to function at your best? What does that look like? Create that kind of world for yourself. Um, and again, I know a lot of my community are people who deal with chronic pain and chronic illness and you kind of never know what a day is going to be like. And one of the challenges we can have with like chronic pain and chronic illness, PCOS also fits in chronic illness category. It's chronic, it comes, it goes. Um, something we struggle with is um, fitting in to like a box somebody else creates for us. Um, like that's that's a challenge. Um, Norman says not excuse sink and laundry. Got it. Okay. So so Norman is is calling himself out that this that he needs to do some dishes and and do some laundry and um, and then he he pushed past some other things and now he, I got it I got it Norman awesome. So allow your body to rest and just know that you're gonna take care of that stuff and you'll get it done awesome. Um, so so basically when we're dealing with things that are chronic and we're asked to fit in a box. So let's, let's, let's talk about the box that is nine to five day job, okay? You show up at nine, you leave at five, you got a boss, you're supposed to be there nine to five, you're supposed to be productive within nine to five, that is the box you are asked to go in. I'm not good at that box, I probably never will be because of who I am and because of what my body does and because of what I manage on a day-to-day -day basis. I've chosen to create my own box of whatever shape that it is and sometimes I'm asked to go fit into boxes but I have the luxury of being able to create what that box is. I'm gonna also offer another option. First of all, again, if you wanna create your own box, <laughs> whether it's a triangle or a trapezoid or a circle, you can also comment below or message me. I have solutions on how to create your own slightly more entrepreneurial box to hang out in. It's pretty cool over here. Um, but I'm also gonna offer to you, if you are currently in a box and you are working and you do not wanna be on disability and you're someone dealing with chronic illness and, or chronic pain or those kinds of things, amazing, you're awesome, and I wanna give you some support. Who said that box had to look exactly like your boss said? Where is it written? Is there a law? What is the, con what, what is the consequence if you slightly adapt the shape of the box. I've helped people do this before too. Maybe that looks like sometimes you come in at 10 and you leave at six. <gasps> Daring, shocking, you're living on the wild side. I know you all are probably getting used to my sense of humor here, but you get what I mean. I once was in a day job Mind you, this was like 12 or 13 years ago. It's been a really long time since I had a job. Um, and I had to deal with really bad traffic coming back and forth. I think I've told the story before. It's sound, I'm having a bit of deja vu. But I realized that if I got in an hour earlier and I left an hour earlier, I could be way more productive. And I didn't have to sit with, in traffic for hours, which was better on my body. At the time, I was, 
I was pretty symptomatic of fibromyalgia and I had really severe chronic back pain. Um, and so sitting in my car in Los Angeles for two hours both ways meant that I can't focus once I'm there. So everybody fails if I show up and I can't work because I'm in pain. So starting to think about what could you ask for to create a slightly different shape of a box while you're doing the best to again accomplish what your job description is. And maybe this is a request to work from home sometimes. Maybe you work um, from home one day of the week. Maybe you, you set with your boss that on a day where you don't feel well, you're going to f do weekend hours. I don't know, but create, and again, I don't know what that looks like exactly for you. If you want help, comment below, send me a message. I've offered this before. Start to see how you can shift and create your own reality in order to not have to make as many excuses. You see where this is going? You can still accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish with a little bit more planning and a little bit more requesting about what it is that you actually need. And by shifting your environment to help support you instead of just deciding that you don't fit the environment. Because I'm sorry, that's an excuse, right? Sorry, not sorry on that one, I guess. Um, so I wanna leave you with a thought. The next time you wanna make an excuse, or the next time you decide there is one, like I had one earlier this week, um, I didn't wanna do something because it was gonna cost me money, and I didn't wanna spend that money. And I knew in that moment I caught myself and I said, I don't wanna do this. I'm about to make an excuse about why I don't need to do this. And then I thought about it and I said, no, I have room on my credit card, I can spend that money, and if I do that thing, it gives me the opportunity to do this other thing that then positively impacts my acting career. And I could wait to do this thing when my cash flow is higher and I don't have to put it on a credit card, but what that would then do is make me wait to take this other action that impacts this other action that impacts my acting career. So the excuse causes a ripple effect of other things that then pushes back my activity and it takes me out of being in action for this thing that really, really matters to me. So in that case, the environment, I could say, oh, I don't have a lot of money right now, I'm still like waiting on another big acting job and I'm working on this other business and it's not producing as much. Like I could make a million excuses as to why I didn't need to take that action on Wednesday. I'm gonna tell you that I caught myself that that was an excuse and I did it anyway. A different example, the following day, I didn't feel so well when I woke up. My cycle was coming, shocker. PMS, right? Talked about that. We already filled you in on what was going in there. Um, and I checked in and I realized that I probably shouldn't do my kettlebell training that day. I didn't make an excuse about it. I just communicated to my coach and I said, hey, that's not gonna happen today. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Not an excuse, right? Because that's not happening today. Self-care, gonna do it tomorrow, gonna make it work. Now that I woke up this morning, it might not actually happen today again, but I don't have to feel guilty about it because I'm actually listening to what my body is telling me. Not an excuse, okay? So, I think I rambled. Leaving you with a thought. Look at your environment. What can you do to shift your environment to allow for you to show up and stay in action? And when is it not an excuse and when are you listening to your own body and creating some self-care so that you can better show up and be a contribution in whatever it is that you're working on? Find those times. I want to hear about it. And if you need my help, again, I'm an actress, producer, I'm a wellness guide. I guide people into navigating this maze of all of these alternative healthcare options and things. Sometimes that means working with me. Sometimes that means I pass you to other people that you could work with. I do free consultations and I guide you to different products and services that I think are helpful. I've been in this industry for 12 years and I've also been around this industry for about 20 looking for solutions to manage my, my chronic issues without the use of Western medical treatment. So I'm gonna help guide you and I can't wait to talk to you. I'm Megan Densmore. Have a, a free 
and fun Friday. I'm here to help you find your freedom. Thanks, everybody.